she had at the moment. Uh, my question relates to uh, your time as a journalist and the workings of the media. This is something that baffles us as Muslim, and I'd like you to shed some light on this, working both from the inside as well as looking at it from the outside now. Uh, one of the uh, things that I would like to understand is what are the sentiments of journalists and what are the sentiments of the media people when they report on issues that relate to Muslims and Islam. And I'd like you to shed some light on that. And I'd just like to highlight a comment that I picked up the other day in the New Zealand Herald. It was, there was a comment that came from some expert who was talking about how to spot a terrorist in a neighborhood or something to that effect. And the comment that was relayed or written down, it said, there are three, people in, there are three groups of people in Europe that you can identify as terrorists coming from the Muslim community. The first one is immigrants, second one is second generation Muslim, and the third one are converts. I'm not sure what that leaves for the rest of the people, but I mean you fall in one of the groups. So my question is, uh, now how do these comments get through the editorial process, and what are the sentiments of the media and the people working in the media when they do write things like this? It's very easy to spot a terrorist. There were eight of them in Scotland the other week at the G8. One of them lives in the White House, another one lives in Downing Street. And the biggest terrorist, the biggest war criminal, is in Israel. He's called Ariel Sharon. As a journalist, I would love just to scrap the word terrorist. It is meaningless. Nelson Mandela, one of the most revered statesmen in the world, was called a terrorist by Margaret Thatcher. If you ask an Afghan farmer what is a terrorist, he'll tell you it was the guy who flew over his land and in a B-52 bomber and dropped bombs that are still exploding, exploding, killing and maiming today. If you ask a Palestinian child what is a terrorist, She'll tell you it's the Palestinian soldier who killed her sister. If you ask a Chechnyan what is a terrorist, he will tell you it is Putin who is using the war on terror to slaughter the Chechnyans. We all have different definitions of terrorists. I would completely, as a journalist, like to ban the word. And as for journalists, these are very troubled times, and finding good journalists is very, very difficult. But there are a few, and what I would say to you all is to go onto the internet and find them, and learn to trust your sources, and try and seek corroboration. The media has done a great disservice to the Muslim community around the globe. Part of it is due to ignorance, and part of it is due to an Islamophobic attitude by some of the newspaper publishers. And while we're on the subject, I would just like to address the agenda program on Sunday, which featured a Muslim who said that our universities in New Zealand are in the hands of Muslim radicals that have become breeding grounds for Muslim radicals. He was talking absolute, complete nonsense, and this is one of the most disgraceful pieces of journalism I have seen since I've been here. There is no corroboration to his story. He has an ax to grind. He's a very unhappy young man. And... Um, what he said was completely untrue. I have been to Auckland University today and more or less said that. We are living in very dangerous times and we have to be careful to be able to disseminate what is true and what is not. And we have to be very, very wary of the siren calls. And what I would say to Winston Peters is 
There's a village in New Zealand looking for its idiot. You'd better go home, mister.